live. We're live. Hi, we're the Snarky Sisters. I'm Diana. And I'm Lisa. And we have a very special guest today. Well, they're all very special guests, but this is a super special guest, Yasmin Williams. And here's our song. It's the Sunday Summer Spotlight with the Snarky Sisters, live at half past noon. Right here on our Facebook page, with our friends we will commune, because we're communists, <laughs> featuring Aspen Williams and some of her exceptional tunes. Well, our guest today loves writing and making music with a passion. Her songs are complicated, her techniques are hard to imagine. She's a breath of springtime, Jasmine. Today we celebrate our friend, Yasmin. Oh, yeah. What was pretty epic. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't know y'all were going to do that. <laughs> well, you never know what we're going to do. Oh. Diana, Feel free to use it. Feel free to use it. Yes. Oh, for sure. Please send me an audio. <laughs> okay. I'll put it right on my website. So, so cheers to you. Oh, what are you drinking, Diana? So I'm drinking. I've got uh, uh I've got a, a shot of Pepto and a Kahlua and cream. Oh, well. We're, we're, che cheers to you. I have cheers. a a Yasmin Jaeger bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Here we oh. go. Cheers. <laughs> They taste about the same, I'd say, actually. Oh, I need the zip this morning. Hey, so we're so happy to have you, Yasmin. Um, so for our guests, oh, we are so excited. Yasmin Williams, she is an acoustic fingerstyle guitarist with an unorthodox, groundbreaking way of playing. Her innovative techniques include alternate tunings, percussive hits, two-handed tapping, using a cello bow, a kalimba, and this one I'll have to ask you about later, wearing tap shoes. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, she just released her second album just a few weeks ago, and it has already received rave reviews from prestigious publications, including Pitchfork, No Depression, Rolling Stone, which calls you a 24-year-old virtuoso guitarist. Oh, and yeah. the album, Urban Driftward, a stunning new album. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, it's Thank like it's the only album released this year. So fabulous. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, well, two, two last things. Last year and this year. Two I'm, things. Tap yeah. shoes. Tell me oh, about your okay. tap shoes. <laughs> so, like, I got the idea because a lot of times when I'm lap tapping, you know, I use, like, both of my hands. So uh -huh. to keep the beat going, if I want a beat in the song, <clears throat> I have to use my feet because <laughs> that's the only thing left. Are they like real tap shoes, like black yeah. patent leather with the little? Yeah, they're real tap shoes. You know, I think I have them somewhere, like from when I was in third grade, you know? I mean, I can't I... actually tap dance, so like don't. <laughs> like, I can you like, can? I cannot. Oh, okay. I, That's... I can do time That's... steps. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. How I about shuffling like, uh... off to Buffalo? And... <laughs> right. Oh, okay. I got you. It's a da-da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da, you know, the frog with the top yeah, yeah. hat. Yeah, I've seen that before. I can't do that. No. <laughs> it's, just, it's like basically like a four count. I can do like, I don't know. I'm trying to get a little more like tricky with it, but I have to learn how to dance, I guess. Are you so. wearing them now? I am. Let's see. Oh, wait. I have to move my camera. Oh, don't! That's oh, all right. No, no, that's no, 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 no! No, you can, don't, hear him, don't right? you can hear him, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, there you go. <laughs> so fabulous! The, I had one other thing, and then I'm going to shut up so we can move forward because I talk too much. <laughs> but but Stop. yes, you man, talk too much. I do. I do. Um, I'm one of those people. So so 24 years old. Okay. Yeah. Look, I'm trying to like you, but I see 24 years old, and I'm like, <laughs> she plays guitar <laughs> this well. She's stinking 24 years old. That's just not fair. Okay. It's very fair. I've been playing for like 10, 11 years already. That's not even that long. Let me stop. Okay. All right. 
we can stop right now. <laughs> well, um, tell us about how you pick, how you decided you wanted to play the guitar because that's a that's a good story. Oh gosh, you were yeah. you were like an expert, and I've always wondered this because I've known kids who played guitar hero, and I think to myself. They're never going to be able to play guitar after right? playing Guitar Hero, you right? You think that, but usually that's the case because the game is not like it's nothing like an actual guitar. <laughs> right? But like I, yeah, that's how I wanted to start learning. I beat the game, uh, Guitar Hero Two, on expert, um, and my parents got me a real electric guitar. So wow. I started on that for like a year, year and a half, and I switched to acoustic because you can just do more with it. Like you can do a lot of cool stuff. Um, I didn't like acoustic at first when I first started playing because I thought it was like a singer songwriter, like four chord type of thing. Uh, but I figured out you could do a lot with it. So I've been playing this mainly um, now for like 11 years or so. Wow. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so how exciting to have such great reviews. Um. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what to say because I didn't expect any of that. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I mean, I thought people would like the album, and um, the record label I'm working with, Spinster Sounds, did a great job trying to like push it before the release, but I didn't know I'd get a Pitchfork review. I didn't know I'd get a No Depression or Rolling Stone. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, happy. I'm really happy with it, but <laughs> like the Washington Post, that, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's all, it's all good, and you deserve all of it, too. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. I mean, I worked hard on the album, and I think it's just showcases where I am now and it definitely shows growth from my first one so I'm just happy people like it what, what would you like to play for us first and then we'd love to talk to you about what you just played for us sure I think I'll play a song called Juvenescence first because I just really like playing this one it's definitely has like a morning time vibe even though it's the afternoon now but I'm still in the morning because I, I woke up like two hours ago so. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you <ya. laughs>
Awesome. Yay. It's so beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, that one's basically just kind of like weird because I have to switch from playing this way to playing this way in the like in the middle of the song when you're tapping so i also read something about you where you you wanted to talk when you had your electric guitar uh you were trying to do the doing the tapping like uh mm -hmm. you know yeah and uh but you decided it was easier just to lie yeah. your guitar I mean, flat like i don't know why this is kind of like tapping like how do people even i don't know i don't i don't know tapping like this is kind of tricky probably because my fingers are kind of like short i don't know but like this way, it's just a lot easier because you can see the fretboard and um, um, it's, it's just more natural for me, I guess. I have so many questions. I don't know where to start. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so when you started playing, um, it kind of came from this place, like an organic place. Like you just yeah. really felt like it was coming from inside you. You didn't want to copy anybody. Yeah, for sure. I was definitely <clears throat> kind of um hyper aware of that i wanted to write my own songs i definitely didn't want to have outside influences which is kind of weird like when you're first learning something you kind of it would make sense to have like idols or something you like learn all their songs or something but i didn't really want to do that i guess i was just a composer at heart and just wanted to write my own stuff um and Were like you the, the more i wrote the better i got you know? were you also the kid who was like banging on the pots and pans when you were little uh, or like were you yeah. percussive? Yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah. Like, I mean, I felt, I always thought everybody kind of like banged on walls and banged on counters and banged on the desk at school. <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> so, yeah. You, you are like so it. strongly percussive as a performer. I Thank mean, you. your, your, um, your melodies are, are gorgeous and lush and everything, but this percussiveness that you have, you know, that you generate, um, I, I know that, you know, some, some, like, some kids aren't that way when they're little yeah. not everybody you know you know naturally like my son i'm going to speak my son justin you know he was the kid who dragged out all the pots and pans and was was playing them <laughs> mm. um and he ended up becoming a guitar player too but oh really cool yeah so yeah so i so, mean i feel like a lot of kids who aren't percussive like I, I mean i guess most of the kids i met who play an instrument they play piano for some reason, <laughs> I felt like a lot of percussive kids do play guitar, but I don't really know. I guess the guitar is a very percussive instrument, even if you're not kind of doing this type of stuff, even just do, playing. Do you know the cellist Hank Roberts, if you've heard of him? I don't. Well, he's very percussive in, in what he does. And I was just wondering, um, he's starting, I guess, I, I don't think he's always sung, but he's starting to put vocalizing into his stuff. Are you going to go that route at some point, do you think? like me myself probably yeah. not but i mean i've featured vocalists before um on a song and i definitely want to do that in the future like feature other people <laughs> singing but me eh, probably not okay so <laughs> like, what i don't what, write lyrics so it'd be uh -huh. kind of difficult but do you do you sing do you vocalize or is that like by myself yeah um i used to sing in choir when i was younger for years uh -huh. but I don't know. I just find it a lot more natural and just easier to kind of just speak through the guitar. The guitar is just such a unique, just you can do anything on this. So vocals to me aren't really needed. But yeah, I am thinking about going that route, having other people. Well, tell us about the song that you just played that was so wonderful. Yeah, so Juvenescence, I wrote, started writing, I think, last year or either like maybe on the song i think it was last year that i finished the song yeah it was last year and it's basically kind of just like i don't know i wanted to write a song that was something i could play in the morning that was fun and also just a song i could play at a gig and like always feel comfortable playing because a lot of the times my songs are pretty complicated and i have to really practice before like a show to get it kind of nail it down but this one i can just kind of pick up the guitar and play which is nice um yeah that's basically just of that. We have some a couple comments already. Kristen Jones says, hi, uh, so glad to see Yasmin featured today. Just got her most recent album. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fabulous. So uh, what have you been doing since March? I guess you had a, uh, since last March, it's almost a year now. Everything been... got canceled. 
Yeah. So I had a lot of time to work on this album. Um, but I honestly wasn't sure if I would... I knew I'd get it released at some point, but I didn't... Like, I'd been saying I wanted to write an album, and I started saying that in 2019, but I had nothing really finished then. <laughs> I was kind of just putting it out there in the air. <laughs> but 2020 definitely gave me a lot of time to finish it, and um, I was really fortunate to be able to go to the studio safely and the, you know do my music video safely and all that. So, what studio um, did you? Where did you record it? I recorded at Blue House Productions with um, Jeff. Okay. You probably, yep. you probably, yeah. He, Great. He did an amazing job. And for mastering, I went to Tonal Park with Charlie Pilzer. Charlie. Yeah, he's that's amazing. fabulous. Yeah, he is amazing. all local people, which is super cool. Um, yep, that's great. Yeah. And where's that? And the record and uh, the record company, Spinster Sounds, mm -hmm. right? They're based they, in Asheville, North Carolina. They're fabulous. Yeah, they're. I mean, yeah, all woman run, um, all female artists on there. Is yeah, they're great. So I'm then, what's lucky. the plan now? Uh, what as things start opening up, is there a backlog of of concerts that of people who got canceled? Like everything yeah. that you got canceled, is right. that going to open up or who knows? So the thing right? is, is right. The thing is, is like people who had tour set up for last year that got canceled are all like pushed to this year, which makes it difficult to like get new shows. So I'm kind of looking towards next year. Like I've booked some things for this year, but I don't know. Like for a tour situation, hopefully the summer of this year, fall. But if not, then next year for sure. I hope. Well, in the meantime, there are things like st live streaming and shows like this. Yeah, so I mean, this is this is cool, but honestly, I'm getting kind of tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> just like getting everything set up all the time, and I'm lucky yeah. I have really good equipment I was able to get, but it's it's. It's, and it's nice to stay in my house, but it's kind of a hassle, you know? You want to be in front of an audience. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. You want Miss the wild the applause. Right. Well, why don't you play another song, and then, then we can talk about your equipment. I'd cool. love to do that. I'll play a pretty percussive song. Um, it's called Through the Woods.
<laughs> fabulous, you. fabulous. Can I can I ask you? Do you write down? Do you transcribe? Do you write sheet music to your compositions? Yeah, I do. Um, usually just so like I can sell them on my site since people like to buy them. But now I'm starting to do it more um, just for my own like so I can remember what I do <laughs> instead <laughs> of having like a thousand voice memos. <laughs> so so uh, Yasmin, true. did you play um, guitar at, like when you were a l little child or like no, how I started did... at twelve? It was twelve. Wow. Yeah, in eighth grade. And so you've got all of these skills to go. I mean, I mean, and and then like I just I'm sorry I'm speechless. <laughs> it's so I mean, amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I mean I I haven't played. I guess it hasn't. I haven't been playing guitar for that long. But I just really started off um, after like a year of playing electric and even playing electric guitar was pretty adventurous. But acoustic guitar just kind of was a breakthrough in a way and just yeah. really unlocked something. And it just made me. I was just all over the place. I was just soaking up everything I could try to figure out on this instrument like all you did uh you were playing classical and jazz and everything yeah classical i was kind of taught myself because i really wanted to go to a place called governor school which is in in virginia i think it was in radford yeah all my friends were going and i wanted to go for a reason so i like taught myself how to play classical repertoire in like two weeks before the audition <laughs> Oh, fine. <laughs> it was really fun. It was worth it. It was it was horrible trying to learn all that, but it was worth it. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't play much anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a bit much for me. This is more fun. Wow. Well, it, it, and it looks like a lot of fun. And I see you have a kalimba there, and I read that. Yeah. You first heard the kalimba where? <laughs> uh, can you okay? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, kalimba story is the song. Maurice White plays this awesome kalimba solo, and I can't do that, but um, I like how it sounds, so I just use it on my guitar sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when we first saw, saw you, uh, we it was perched uh, on your guitar just like yeah. that, and I was going, I was like going, what the hell is that? And then you started playing it. Yeah, that's, yeah, my, that's my black one. That's my other one. This is my newer one. Oh, that was at the Mask Awards, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And she got the gold for instrumentalist that year. Yeah, I did. That was that was fun. That was a cool start to the year. I know. I looked at Diana like, what the heck are we listening to? <laughs> what? <laughs> she looks like she's 19. We hate her. That's, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I was bare. How, when was that? Was that like 20, two years ago? Three 18? years ago? Maybe. Um, yeah. 19. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I was, it was I before was, that. It was, it was earlier really? than that. Yeah. Wow. It was at okay. Gypsy Sally's. Yeah. So yeah, it was at least. Girl, you, were, ago. you know, I I, I love you. Too far from nineteen. <laughs> I'm jealous. That's all. <laughs> I wrote so, the song like around nineteen twenty. <laughs> what are your favorite techniques these days? Are they? Do you still play with the bow? I now you on that song you were playing with a what a hammered dulcimer. Oh yeah. So mallet. this thing <laughs> I use in a few songs. It's basically like a hammered dulcimer, but it's for a guitar. It's like shaped oh. kind of for guitar. Um, I just like how it sounds because it sounds like metallic and stuff. But well, Adele, um, I'm sorry. One of our oh, uh, guests for, that's yeah. listening says um, it's like playing the piano on the guitar. That's what it, that's she's right. That's actually really funny because like I'm not good at piano. <laughs> <laughs> not good now, at, why are you good at college. piano? Why yeah, I learned good at in piano? college and I was good for a semester, so I wouldn't fail. But now I haven't practiced. So I'm okay. Practiced. It's like, just I'm, practicing. It's yeah. I just don't practice enough. It's hard. It's a hard. That's hard instrument. Now you went to NYU and you were graduated with a degree in composition and music theory. Yes, I did. Yep. So when you were getting your degree, what did you envision yourself doing with that degree? <laughs> that's a really good question. Um, I hoped that I would be a professional musician. I envision nothing because <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a music degree. Usually, typically you stay in school and get a master's in composition or a master's in like whatever instrument you're performing. Um, I was kind of burnt out of school, so I left and just did music immediately. I recorded my first album and that did well. So I just have been trying to keep that up ever since. Um, but like right after school, I, 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 I didn't know what I was going to do really. So you're you're from Northern Virginia, but you lived you went to college. You were in New York City. So yeah. how, how was that 
shift for you to oh, go from weird like yeah. i'd never been in new york city before going uh -huh. to college so it was definitely um a shocker it was an eye-opening experience it was a lot of fun um because there's just so many things to do there's like so many places to play gigs and even though i didn't have much time because my school schedule was crazy i had like eight classes a semester when you usually have like four um wow. it was i had made time to play some gigs and it was so much fun just exploring the city with friends because we were all musicians and just trying to learn from each other and networking was great professors had some really good ones um yeah yeah it was just yeah it was a really so cool experience. Did, did you live down at, at washington square park that... i lived um, I lived, the closest I lived to there was at um, Union Square, which is on 14th Street, so like a walk. But I had my own nice. apartment for the last, uh, like, year and a half of living there in Brooklyn, which was cool. Very um, nice. Yeah. And why did you, why did you leave? Uh, New York? Yeah. Because it was just too much. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it's so expensive, first of all. It's expensive here, but it's even more expensive there. You can live there now. It's cheap um, now. <laughs> it's cheap. I don't want to go there now. <laughs> yeah, COVID. seriously. But, uh, everyone I know who still live there has gotten COVID at some point. <laughs> wow. It was, it, was a, it was great for college, but after college, I just kind of wanted to get out of there for um, a little bit and take a break from, it's just really fast paced. Um, which is I have a... Sorry, we have a question from Tommy Wright who's saying, any offers for movie scoring or anything in other media yet? Oh, that I was- That sounds like something you'd be question. perfect yeah, for I've doing. Yeah, I've been trying to break into that. Um, I have music with Marmoset. Um, they're a company that does like sync stuff, which is super cool. Trying to get into that, but it's kind of a difficult <laughs> avenue to break into. Um, but yeah, I would love that for sure. That's definitely a goal of mine to score something. Yeah, yeah and I, I also envision you writing like a concerto for that's... your guitar and orchestra. <laughs> that would be cool, too. What I know, that's, that's honestly, you're kind of, yeah. I mean, for a next album, I'm having a little thoughts about it, and that's definitely something I would like to do. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, all of these things are great and things I'm thinking about a lot. <laughs> yes, well, you can have all of our ideas. <laughs> I'm, 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 being I'm, I'm being funny i'm being funny there you are i am taking them though because i definitely want to do both of those things so you want to play something else for us now yeah sure uh, sure i think i'll play something off of my first album um, this one is called high five <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. My age gen keeps wanting to go flat on me. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> I just probably have to change it. <laughs> so, so I guess now is a good time. That's a, such a nice, beautiful, lush sound. And I, I don't want to compare you to anybody because I think some of the comparisons that have been made to other people don't don't really fit there's a lot of john yeah. fahey ish beautiful yeah. lush that's the lush guitar sound mm -hmm. that i hear tell everyone about your beautiful sky top grand concert oh yeah guitar. yeah so <laughs> eric wagashoff of sky top guitars shout out to you you're amazing um he built this great thing mm. the back is um spalted tamarind wood the front is it's gorgeous something called torito hold sitka spruce which is basically just like Sitka spruce, but with these holes in it. Um, and tell us where the holes yeah, came from. Mollus burrowed into the wood several years ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think he found it. Well, I think he found it in like the Pacific Northwest somewhere, or that's where the wood comes from. So and, snails or clams or something yeah, burrowed yeah, through like, the like, wood. Yeah, like shipworms. Basically. While it was in the water, <laughs> shipworms. Yeah. Right? Wow. And now, now, yes, I noticed you don't have a sound hole in front right. except for those those holes and he's the known sound holes for are on the side. design of like two huge side sound ports which is nice because it's like a stereo image almost um for me when i'm playing like this but when i'm playing like this it's a bit uh different the audience can still hear it really well it projects well but um he had the idea of using this wood because it has kind of holes on the top that replace the typical sound sound hole you see here um so the audience gets get more of the sound and it just so, this sounds great. <laughs> when you're recording, where do you, where where does the sound engineer point the microphone? I mean, so that's a thing, right? <laughs> um, typically, I guess he for this last album, he like kind of put a mic, like a couple mics, like really close to the guitar, like around this area, and sometimes there were mics like in the back um, to get this. But typically, he used like only two mics, really. I don't know how he got it to sound as good as he did. Wow. When I mic it myself, I put like a mic up here somewhere and like a mic closer, um, which seems to work. But Where's yeah, the it, best place for people to buy the new album? And it's called Urban Driftwood. Yeah, the best place is my Bandcamp page. So yasminwilliams.bandcamp.com. Bandcamp. Um, it's also on all streaming platforms, Spotify, iTunes, you know, uh, Amazon, wherever you get music. So yeah, but Bandcamp is the best place you can get actual physical merch there we have a couple people that have chimed in um travis dylan um said i had no idea there were holes on the side and me neither travis <laughs> <laughs> you can't see them because usually i'm playing like this so it's just all you see is this but yeah, yeah. very huge like yeah <laughs> sound points which yeah. is really cool actually because you can see like all the inside of the guitar and the bracing he uses and like Let's see. Show is, us. Show that like, to us I'll again. To... <laughs> that is very cool. It's not even dusty inside. Oh. oh no, I make sure to clean it, but it doesn't. It doesn't get too dusty anyway. But yeah, it's it's great. It's so, fabulous. So I'd like to hear more about how you um, set yourself up for streaming because I know a lot of our listeners who are yeah. songwriters would like to know what you yeah. use. Yeah, really happy to share. So um, I have an audio interface by Audient. It's the ID14. It has two line and mic inputs, um, and it has a, a DI as well, which sounds great. Um, I like this more than the Focusrite, like Scarlet, for example, just because I think it has better preamps, and it's, it's just built better, and it's more sturdy, and it's just better. So <laughs> um, and I, have a, I have a Focusrite, so that's I've compared the two. Um, I also have, this mic is an AKG 451B, which is really nice. Uh, the other mic for my tap shoes is an AKG P170, which is like $60. It's, it's super great. Sounds nice. Yeah. Um, I have another thing where, cause I have a lot of inputs right now. I have like one, two, three, four, like four, five inputs. Wow. Um, so I connect my audio interface and only has two through ADAT and two. Another thing that has an additional eight inputs called a Focusrite Octopre MK2. Um, so that's cool. And all of this I can like route through my computer using something called Black Hole, which is 
basically you download it off github or i think i found it on reddit actually so you can download it <laughs> for free and it installs onto i have a mac so it installed onto my mac under audio midi setup and it's basically it sets itself up as a driver so you can like select it to route your audio output and input through so if you have a digital audio workstation like um i use reaper and studio one but if you have like logic or pro tools or something tools. you can use black hole and set it through your audio output and put that audio output into zoom or whatever as an input and then you get the sound of the microphones and like the true sound not the zoom compressed sound even though zoom's gotten a lot better um if you have microphones you can use them with black hole and you get the true sound of the mics through to you know online whatever audience you're doing you can use this with obs too yeah i can't remember who we were talking to diana th that um understanding how to use audio is almost like a barrier of entry for some people to do streaming i'm it not sure who we were talking to months <laughs> to yeah. get to this point like it's if not a year i mean it, it i had to buy all this stuff first of all because i really only had one mic um and just understanding like how to route everything to where it sounds the best consistently uh black hole is a huge help and it's free because there's something called loopback but that's like a hundred bucks which mm -hmm. i don't know so <laughs> black hole is free and it does the same thing just as well um and it works it seems to work with any platform like Streamyard, um zoom uh even like google meet or you know whatever people use uh yeah it's great i recommend it yeah i think someone like you um you have so many different places where that music really has to like you know when you're you know it's it's a little more tricky for you than it would be for someone just like sitting in front of a microphone playing a guitar yeah it is because so it has to sound good because i'm not singing so it has like the guitar has to sound as best as it can um and like one mic just won't cut it <laughs> like my guitar do, pickup is also routed through here i have a whole pedal board that i use yeah it's so did you have any like somebody on the other end like saying um you know hey i'm streaming to youtube or whatever can you listen and tell me how it's coming through how, how did you reinforce that the sound was good coming through the other like, side sound checks are good i always make sure to do one and like when i first figured this stuff out i had a youtube live that i was like an hour late to because i didn't know i needed obs and i didn't know i needed like a stream key to, right i didn't know i was like a key i don't have a key it's just like a virtual key <laughs> i didn't know anything so i figured that out through them like the audience waited the full hour i think it was maybe an hour and a half they all waited for me it was wow. so nice but and they're like yeah it sounds good i was like okay because i had just gotten this mic and i didn't know what yeah that was crazy but i gradually just figured it out by the audience just telling me stuff and sound checks and people who know more than me giving me tips. Well, a lot of songwriters are really listening hard to um, what people like you are saying yeah. because and if you ask, um, it's, like, it's people hard. Give me tips, yeah. Like I'm more than happy to give anyone tips because this stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> like, well, you I figured it out. Avoid, yeah, but if I can help people avoid like the amount of time it took for me to figure this out, I that I do that. You know what though, once you get it figured out, right, for yourself, they're gonna be upgrade something. And so there's for always sure. some yeah. new thing thrown into the mix. So we all mm. kind of just gotta stay vigilant and work at it. But I'm talking too much. And I think since we're running out of time, we really? would love to hear you play another. And I think Diana yeah. wanted to ask you about tuning as well. Oh, sure. Do, do yeah, you, what tunings do you use? You use quite a few or is it mostly a drop D or, or a D tuning? I use mostly open D, but on my latest album, I did use, because I play a harp guitar on there, so there were some weird tunings with that and with the Cora that I play on there as well. Um, that tuning for the Cora matches an F tuning on here, kind of a weird F tuning, so I had to kind of retune this to match the Cora, but usually for solo guitar stuff, I just use open D or open yeah. D minor or something. Yeah. Nice. Okay, what do you want um what do you want to play for us next our cover is cool of course okay so i want to play a song by a rapper uh, <laughs> i don't know if this is if you you guys typically have covers on here or not but actually i'll play a song by post malone 
uh, called Sunflower. Okay. Just listening to the original song if you have never heard it before. Oh. And like comparing the two. <laughs> Definitely. Very, very cool. What what made you think of doing that? Were you listening to the song and said so, I, I Yeah, like the song is in the it was in the old uh animated well, it was like what, three years ago it came out, maybe? The old Spider Man animated movie. Um mm -hmm. and I saw it in theaters and I was like obsessed with the song after that. Because the song kind of plays mm -hmm. throughout the movie. And I just wanted to adapt it to guitar, and it was weirdly easy. So, because it's like one of the few rap songs that actually has like a melody and a nice, you know, beat, playful. So, yeah, I don't do many covers, but that one is is fun. So, when you're writing songs, I'm sorry, I hate I hate asking such process so uh, questions, but are you usually is there a usual, and are you sitting around and you'll you'll be playing, and a snippet will stand out, and you'll then oh I'll voice memo this one and come yeah. back to it yeah that happens a lot um that's why i have like hundreds if not thousands of voice memos <laughs> um <laughs> typically i'll like doodle and then kind of either i've now started to write things down either on like you know sheet paper or um, just in my computer i use guitar pro to write stuff down too but yeah if it's just something quick i'll just record it and kind of sometimes it's kind of like a puzzle like i'll have a lot of voice memos and like kind of pick out of them and hmm. fit them together hmm. that sometimes happens um but most of the time it's just either i already have an idea in my head or i'm just doodling around and a snippet will pop up that i like and i'll record it or write it down and you're probably reticent to say that you have many influences but do you have any influences and what did you grow up listening to in Woodbridge as a teenager? Well, as a as a kid, I and listened to- preteen. Yeah, as a preteen and kid, I listened to a lot of um, like what my parents played. So rap, R&B, uh, smooth jazz, soul music, go-go music, um, 
and <laughs> I was just talking about this with my mom yesterday. She was she was telling me about how I was like three or four, and I loved this. What was the song? It was a song by Sting. It was called Fields of Gold. Oh she yeah. Was like I don't know, like why you were three and you left that song. <laughs> but I guess like I've always been kind of a mellow kind of person who just like different types of music. But as a preteen and um, a teenager, I listened to more heavier, I guess, angsty type. Uh, I discovered rock, like hard rock, um, metal, uh, like uh, Hendrix, Nirvana, um, different metal bands, uh, you know, Black Sabbath, all of that, which I listened to um, most of the time. But now it's really just like I've been getting into a lot of folk, um, older music like Elizabeth Cotton. And um, yeah, I listen to everything now, pretty much. It's pretty hmm. wild. Well, My the Spotify whole... playlists are crazy. This is so corny to say, but it's oh, true. Oh, that's your middle name, Lisa. <laughs> it Lisa is corny. Cornball. Nice hair, by the way, Heidi. <laughs> Look at this is my my COVID. <laughs> this is this is COVID. COVID, COVID hair. Hippie long stocking. I Who do you think you are? Jeez. And is that what is that your Hello Kitty hat? Nice. Yes, y Just Yasmin. Saying. I haven't I like done. I, I haven't had anything done to my hair for over a year, and it shows. Oh well, oh, it's, it's I mean beautiful. salons are open. <laughs> She's I, afraid. I, I know, but oh. I'm afraid. Oh well, I'm. <laughs> So I've, I've done this little thing of like sniff sniff and Diana teases me. But anyway, sorry. sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I've seen okay. I've seen people do that on. I didn't know people. So that's a thing. I've seen people do that on YouTube, but I always thought it was like dangerous to cut your. It, hair. It's very dangerous, but I think it's. I don't know. I'm just sort I of. I think it's fine. It looks good. I don't. I like the hat. Oh, uh, <laughs> no! But you, you said nothing about my. <laughs> I like. Uh, well, I like the hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like the hair. Okay. It matches the hat style. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Can you yodel for us too? Oh You're <laughs> Okay. All right. There that's enough. Go. But anyway, Yasmin, you grew up listening to everything. Is there anyone? And and you know um, what? As you said, Libby Cotton. I was thinking. You know, Rosetta Tharp played gonna, in a yeah. lot of different tunings that she made up. Oh really? I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Very few That's of her songs cooler. are in normal tunings, so take a look at it. So makes that makes it a lot of sense, hard. because I did realize it's like weird to play them in standard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I wish I didn't know about them when I first started playing. I wish I did. But now, like in the past few years, I've definitely researched more into just black guitarists, especially female guitarists. And it's really cool that there are quite a few of them um, that are all really good. <laughs> Well, the, the corny yep. thing I was going yep. to say before oh, sorry. Diana oh, no. started picking on my I was trying to make you not tails. say it. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm here. Go. It, no, you are, you really truly do have your whole life ahead of you. And so you can go in so many directions with, with uh, your yeah. talent and skill. Thank you. I mean, it's a bit um, kind of intense to think about because like I just released this album and my mind's kind of drifting to the next one. And I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do, but yeah, I am still pretty young, so I can't imagine like when I'm 80, like how I'll be playing or what. I just hope I'm still playing something. You will be. You will be. Yeah, sure Thank you, you will. Can you yeah. play another song for us before we go? Oh, it's sure. almost almost time to go. Yeah. I thought we had time for two more. We have time for one more. <laughs> uh, I'll play a song called On a Friday Night. It's on my first record. This one's... Great. Hopefully it goes well because I haven't played this in a while. <laughs> <laughs>
cool. <laughs> very cool. Woo! Very, very yeah. cool. Thank wow. you guys so much for having me. This was well, really thank you uh -oh. for being on the show. We look forward to the day where we'll say we knew Yasma before she was a superstar. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Because I really no. feel that way. I really I, do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Stay on with us, Yasma. We want to say pro goodbye to you properly before we go yes, off of air. Course. I want to thank everybody who's watching. Don't forget to share. It's very important. And go to yasminwilliamsmusic.com and please buy this record. Okay? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and we look forward to seeing everybody in person, I hope, soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>